Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we're going to go ahead and kick off the Fantasy News with a badass story coming from the legendary, iconic, man behind Gollum in the live-action Lord of the Rings movies, Andy Serkis. He will be doing a 12-hour live stream where he is reading The Hobbit beginning to end, starting at 10 BST time, and I cannot wait to tune in. You can go ahead and find it on his Hobbitathon COVID-19 GoFundMe page which of course I'll have linked below. And this is just so cool. One, Andy Circus reading The Hobbit. Didn't know I wanted that, but now that it's happening, holy crap, I really, really want that. And two, it's for a good cause. So it's just, you know, all around wholesome, good packaging. Highly recommend you check it out because if you're watching this as of the day of this being released, then you can go ahead and watch Andy Circus bring to life a little bit of Tolkien's world. <laughs> And this video is brought to you by Byzans. Byzans is a social media reading app that combines the best of Goodreads and Discord. I get asked frequently because of my Goodreads videos where I kind of tear it apart, where can I go for an alternative? Byzans is my recommendation. It essentially is the best of Goodreads and Discord, meaning you can kind of mark books currently reading to be read or have read and join chat rooms that are kind of associated with each current status. So if you want to read a book, talk with other people who want to read it. If you're currently reading, same. Have read boom there you go there's a lot of Cosmere fans on there and it's good time it's an up-and-coming app so it's still a bit in development but I highly recommend it and it's one of the best sponsors I've had in the channel in terms of communication with me and you know respect for me as a content creator so that's that's wonderful all around Byzans is the way to go in my opinion for social media reading apps 100% check out the links in the description if you'd like to download it and give it a try for no cost at all now the entire Cosmere shook yesterday as an official Way of Kings poster was released. It depicts Bridge 4 and looks rather cool. It's spoilers. So what I'm going to do is not throw it up yet, or if it's up, it's blurred. And in 3, 2, 1, I'm going to reveal it. And then after I say, hey, it's no longer on screen, we'll be able to just put that away. And people who haven't seen it yet and haven't read the books won't have something spoiled for them. So 3, 2, 1, bam, there is the poster. And in three, two, one, bam, now it's gone. There you go. I hope that solved everyone's missing out or not missing out uh, complaints, and I won't receive any comments about spoilers, I'm sure. I actually think the poster is just, just fine. Um, I don't love it or hate it. I think it's pretty good. I really enjoy the usage of color, uh, but the overall like structure of it, I'm not sure how I feel about. But hey, it's Cosmere, so there's still a huge part of me that's like, I need to buy it now! This is a part of the current Way of Kings Kickstarter, which I'm sure everyone's aware of, and will come in the full movie poster size of 24 inches by 36, so it's not tiny. And I appreciate that, because a lot of the posters we get in this format like are only like printer paper big, and that drives me nuts. And in a piece of quickie fantasy news, we also had Tor put out their monthly fantasy releases for May, and it was a lot of fun to go through. I think the one that caught my eye the most was Shakespeare for Squirrels. I don't know how that isn't going to catch everyone's eye, and I'm going to have to pick that up out of sheer morbid curiosity. But I'll be sure to bring this to you every time Tor puts it out every month, because I think it's a really spectacular list if your full-on, you know, TBR hasn't been filled yet. It's just a nice little way to add in some, some flair to new releases, because everyone likes to have a good balance, right, of what's new and maybe some classic. So if you want to get the cutting edge of new, go ahead and check this list out. And also in awesome badass people reading from books news, it seems that the Harry Potter cast is coming together to read chapters from the series for everyone well in quarantine. And this includes the likes of Daniel Radcliffe. Holy smokes. In fact, he is kicking it off with chapter one. So if you'd like to see, of course, the amazing faces behind the movies that were the Harry Potter franchise, one of the most well-received fantasy adaptations of all time, go ahead and check that one out too. Now let's go into Daniel told you so news and it's happening probably because I said it, definitely because I said it. Everyone listens to me in Hollywood, and I make these decisions happen. Remember a few months ago when I talked about how Taka Waititi should direct a Star Wars movie? Well, ha-bam! It looks like Taka Waititi will be directing and helming his own Star Wars project. Him and Christy Wilson will be co-writing the script, and Taka Waititi will direct. I'm very excited for this because I think, while he is a great comedic director, he's also shown quite a bit of potential with action and just overall execution of ideas. I think the guy did a phenomenal job in Thor Ragnarok of bringing to life this 
exuberant, over-the-top landscape, and having that same creative eye behind Star Wars, I think, could add a lot of personality that arguably has been lacking in Star Wars movies recently. Apparently, Taka Waititi also denied these rumors at one point, and now it's true, which has some people going, so Taka lied. And if you've been aware of who Taka Waititi is as a director, he seems very willing to lie, kind of maybe for his own amusement or not, I don't know. But I think it's funny that these rumors are out there and he went, no, and then they turned out to be true. That's great. And shifting on into video game fantasy news, it seems that Borderlands is going to be getting an adaptation and Kate Blanchett is in talks to play Lilith. That is not a headline I ever kind of expected or a casting I would have chosen, but I love Kate Blanchett and Borderlands has some great lore behind it, so I'm going to be Keeping an eye on this one. I'm not gonna say, some of you thought I'd say I was gonna be excited. No, 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 I have a lot of caution for video game adaptations, even with huge names attached. Michael Fassbender Assassin's Creed. Didn't even try to make it a cough at the end there. But, you know, a lot of people are saying the video game curse has been broken. And if that is the case, Borderlands could continue on in the solid video game adaptation two movie streak we're currently in and make it three. Although all of my video game adaptation hype and energy is still just directed at the Halo adaptation, Adaptation. That has been being talked about since I was Smurf sized, and I really, really want that. Please make it good. I'm not even that big of a Halo fan, and a Halo adaptation has me like psyched. And we also had an official trailer drop for The Last of Us Part 2. I'm, you know, the only thing I take away from this, honestly, at this point, is if you ever need to make a case that video games and the animation and voice work behind them should be up for like Oscar contention. This is the best case you can make, because the people behind The Last of Us have driven storytelling and gaming to another level. It's spectacular. I know there are other phenomenal stories being told in games, but The Last of Us just feels so cinematic on a level that nothing else can touch. The word cinematic is thrown around and abused too much, but it really applies here. And I think a lot of people are gonna agree with me on that. And yeah, I'll be playing this too. And in another piece of fantasy news, something I am calling genital gate. <laughs> There was a bunch of new information released for the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 video game, and one of the bits of customization you will apparently have for your character is their genitalia. The internet reacted exactly how you think the internet would react to that news. That's the whole story. No more comments. I'm... Next thing, next thing, next, move, moving on. We're a news aggregate, we gotta keep moving. And in news, specifically for college students, Tarvalin.net, associated with the Wheel of Time, is putting up a scholarship for two students who write essays and are currently attending accredited universities. That's right, as long as you are a college student who can write an English essay and are currently going to an accredited university, you are eligible for a $500 scholarship. Two winners will be selected. If you're interested, go ahead and check out those links right down there. They reached out to me and asked me if like people in my audience would want to know this, and I was like, y yeah, there there are college kids in my audience. If you need if you need to help pay off that debt, right right down there. I also want to have another edition of Fantasy News Call Out to Screen Rant for having a very misleading headline in a related Deadpool article. The article headline read, "Disney wouldn't approve of many cut Deadpool movie jokes," which is theoretically true, but obviously is going to lead a lot of people into thinking like, oh, for the upcoming Deadpool 3, which has been confirmed, which is now under the Disney umbrella, this is implying they're cutting jokes from that. When in reality, this is jokes that were already cut from the first two Deadpool movies that are already out and weren't even under Disney in the first place. In fact, the actual quote is, you could fill a gymnasium with some of the jokes that got cut out of Deadpool 1 and 2 that would get us all arrested or turned into some sort of Disney liquid. So the implication here certainly is that Disney might have a stricter hand than Deadpool has had to be under before. And if that's the case, sure, but Screen Rant, to me, this came across as you're saying Disney is cutting jokes from upcoming Deadpool 3. It's not the worst headline abuse I've ever seen. In fact, I wouldn't even call it that bad, but it was enough for me to want to clarify for people who may have just saw this in passing and made an assumption that that's not the actual case. Headlines like this, I just don't love. And maybe this wasn't intentional. I could see someone writing this not thinking how it comes across, but to me, it comes across in this way. New Mutants is officially up for pre-order at Amazon. And this is shocking because we've seen no announcement that it's not going to get a theatrical release once this pandemic is over. So I reached out to director Josh Boone, friend of the channel here, to get some clarification on what exactly is going on. And 
this was just a mistake on Amazon's part. New Mutants, as far as everyone is concerned and everyone knows involved in the project, is still going to get a theatrical release later down the road. No, it's not going to join the ranks of the movies that are going straight to Amazon releases or anything along those lines. This was just a oopsie on Amazon's part if they were keeping in timeline with its original release date. So boo Amazon kind of, but not really because it's a very understandable mistake. And I'm sorry for everyone who thought maybe you'd get New Mutants sooner rather than later, but that seems to not be the case. But in New Mutants news, we did get a new screenshot that shows how Cecilia Reyes' powers work and it looks good. I think that looks really different and kind of more organic in an energy way. In news, I am very excited for because I essentially was raised by these cartoons. We've gotten a look at HBO Max's new Looney Tunes series. This is all new Looney Tunes content. And yes, I'm a giant man child because I still love Looney Tunes oh so much. I have memories all the way back to when I was barely able to walk, maybe. I don't know, maybe it's a false memory, but to me it feels real of watching them with my dad and mom. And I've pretty much been a Looney Tunes fan growing up. I remember Looney Tunes Babies, which probably wasn't as good as I remember when I was a kid. And yeah, there's certainly been some betrayals to Looney Tunes lore, but this art at HBO Max, which is seriously embracing the look of classic Looney Tunes, gives me faith that they will be going back to that traditional Looney Tunes humor and not trying to update it, which has been attempted with Looney Tunes before. No, keep Looney Tunes Looney Tunes, you sick degenerates. <laughs> <laughs> that was an overreaction, but I don't know. I just like the idea of new Looney Tunes that are embracing the traditional sense of what the show is and the universe is, with all the quirky, weird violence. It might not be the best thing for kids, but it's... It's needed. Looney Tunes is a force of nature that needs to exist in this world. Now, if it comes out and they've gone with this classic style and updated it to not be Looney Tunes and instead it's just like, oh, whatever, super safe, child-friendly crap, I will be livid and there will be videos about it. <laughs> but in general, and the fact that one of the pieces of art shows Bugs Bunny about to shoot Elmer Fudd in the face with a cannon, I, I think they're going the right way here. And before we jump into the rest of the news, how is the weather over there in the mines of Moria, Green Daniel? Very cold and surprisingly stagnant air. But before I pass it back to you, I actually have a story I would like to cover here that isn't exactly news, but discussion of an important fantasy topic. And that is the intellectual property of various fantasy races and the Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game incorporation of them. D&D has literally been sued before from the likes of the Tolkien estate for bringing in races that are intellectual property of other stories. It's why various races within D&D have different names than what you would see them in fantasy stories they're in. Once again, this is causing headlines because it seems D&D has inadvertently stolen some intellectual property from George R. R. Martin, the man behind A Song of Ice and Fire. It would be easy to just say, oh, D&D continues to steal and they're kind of scummy for doing so. And I don't think they're completely justified in what they're doing. But the other side of it is that what often gets brought into the fold for canonical D&D classes and races to play as is just what players have been doing on their own. Players will start making their own races and classes and systems and eventually D&D will look at them and go, oh, we'll just incorporate that canonically because it seems to be something people like doing. And so there's a bit of complication there, right? If we look at this article, we see that the races in D&D come from a number of different places, but one of them came from an unexpected source as the Githilikengi, I don't know how to say that, were invented by George R. Martin of A Song of Ice and Fire fame and their name was taken without his knowledge. It doesn't seem that George R. R. Martin is pursuing any form of legal action though. I get both sides of it. I really do. This is a case where I don't think either side is completely wrong. I can understand an author going, hey, I invented this, you need to either compensate me or take it out of your material. Or I can see that mm, a lot of the times races within fantasy transcend beyond their original material. A lot of the creations Tolkien came up with aren't synonymous with just Lord of the Rings anymore. They make tons of appearances in other materials. And so at what point does the line become so blurred that a company like D&D can incorporate it in their material and it not be considered scummy? I don't know the answer. I think in this case, Martin's being pretty chill for not pursuing any legal action. I actually appreciate that from him. I also wouldn't entirely blame him for doing so. But I would love to hear from the audience in the comments down below. Where do you think the line is for Dungeons & Dragons? Should they have open access to all fantasy races ever thought of to incorporate in their RPG game because their fans will regardless and at least this way some kind of transaction happens for them? Or no, the fans are doing something without a profit and therefore they're okay and D&D then making a profit off it is not alright. 
I think I lean that direction a bit more, but it's also kind of case by case for me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Back to you, Daniel Green. That was longer than I thought it would be. Back to the news. And in one piece of quickie Netflix news, the Umbrella Academy has officially been renewed for season three. Very nice. And in the final piece of fantasy news we're gonna cover here today, don't know why that arm movement was so drastic, the creator of Black Mirror has said, I don't know what stomach there would be for stories about societies falling apart. So he's kind of saying that the next season of Black Mirror shouldn't really be released right now. I, I get what he's saying, but if you look at movies that are trending and selling really well, like I've seen Contagion on like what's popular in Netflix since all of this started, I actually think he's kind of wrong. People, for some reason, seem to be embracing the idea of, like, society falling apart while society's going through some tumultuous times. So, I, I don't know. I see why he's saying what he's saying, but I think the market actually disagrees. That being said, I understand him maybe wanting to take the proverbial foot off the gas pedal for Black Mirror right now, and also I'm a very big fan of Black Mirror taking a lot more time for its next season because I was not a fan of the last season, and I thought Bender Snatch was fairly overhyped. You guys know Choose Your Own Adventures has been a thing for like ever, right? It, it was just in a TV show now. It, it was cool and it was different, but I don't know. I went in with pretty high expectations and was kind of disappointed with how little there actually was there to dig through. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Join the Discord server and post any news stories you'd like to see me cover here in the Fantasy News channel and have a good one, y'all. Peace. Oh, and Patreon, all that. You know, love you, Patreons. I have a lot of them in this video, so you'll see me saying a lot of names now. Bye! And, of course, I'd like to record a special shout-out to my latest high-tier Patreons. Nicholas, Hildman, James Nelson, Luke Chamberlain, Sterling Dupree, Lester Callanan, and Kai! I think it's Kai. I hope I got that right. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week, and I will talk to you tomorrow. I don't miss days here on the channel, damn it. <laughs>